How do we help a sent Christian become a micro church leader? In other words, how do we take a believer who has a specific neighborhood or network that they feel like they're called to plant the gospel in? That's a sent Christian. How do we help them actually start a simple expression of church with and for that community? Well, our, our answer to that question is what we call a missionary track. Uh, we want to, at Citizen House, give people some practical next steps that they can do uh, to become micro church leaders in the place that Jesus is calling them to. So let me show you what that looks like. The, the missionary track at Citizen House really has four different phases, uh, preparation, recruitment, experimentation, and committing. The first phase is preparation. And the way that you prepare to plant a micro church is first through prayer. We don't plant simple churches merely through strategy and good ideas. We can have great ideas in the world, but if it's not something that the Holy Spirit wants to do and you living in obedience to him, it's a worthless endeavor. This whole thing starts with you being a person of extraordinary prayer. And as you're listening to the Spirit and learning from him, you need to clarify your vision and, and document your vision and strategy. That's what is it that you feel like uh, you need to accomplish What's the vision that God has given you? And how is it that you're going to get there? That's what strategy is. How, how is it that you're going to do this thing? And once you have that really probably documented, um, you have something that you can communicate to other people and you can begin recruiting. You might need to identify some partners, some people to pray for your mission first. You might need some financial partners. Uh, your, your, the mission God is calling you to might require money. And so you need to ask people for that with the vision he's given you. You also need some other leaders, some other people to minister alongside of you uh, to this people group. You're going to set up uh, conversations with all of these people and share what it is that, that God has called you to do and ask them to join with you in it. And the truth is that in some of those conversations, it may help you debrief and go back and clarify more of your strategy and more of the vision. Um, that's a good thing as you're having conversations with others. Next, you'll move to experimentation. Now that you have a group of people, uh, it doesn't need to be a lot of people, but somebody else, maybe a couple people with you engaged in this mission, you can start trying some things. I would start with really just setting up a, a, an environment where people can get to know one another socially. This might be some type of fun get together or party, or it's identifying needs in the community that you're called to and beginning to serve and meet those needs. And it needs to be consistent either weekly or monthly, where people know that you're going to do this thing. And so you can invite them and you can be there and you can get to know them. You're building a relationship with this group of people. And after you have maybe some of these service events or times where you're meeting needs or just parties and hangouts with this group of people, get back together with your core team and talk about it and pray for the people that you're ministering to. Start doing that consistently. And the hope is, is that as you're engaging those people, that the Lord will help you identify some people of peace. And people of peace are folks who are open to you and open to deeper relationship with you, and they're open to spiritual conversations. Those are the type of folks that you can invite to go a little bit deeper with you. Maybe start some sort of discovery Bible study, just a simple uh, time where you can open up the Word of God, read a short passage of Scripture, and have a discussion about who it says God is, who it says people are, and if it's true, what people need to do about it, and if they know anybody who needs to hear that message. Even if you stopped right there, if you're doing that, if you're serving a group of people or partying with them, and you have a maybe a couple people that you're consistently praying for those folks, and then you actually start a Bible study with some of them, you already are developing a rhythm of a simple church. Because we talk about at Citizen House, a, a church uh, is really three things. It's a community of people who are living in their identity as citizens, as family, and as a temple. That means they are on mission together. They are living as a community and they're worshiping Jesus together. When, when you have developed a rhythm where you see all three of those factors uh, in action, you have a simple church. And when you have that, we want you to enter into agreement, into a covenant with other microchurch leaders in the Citizen House family. And we talk about three things when you make that commitment, creed, 
covenant, and community. Our creed is just five statements that we want to build our lives around um, inside of our micro churches. A covenant is where we agree to hold one another accountable, to live the type of lifestyle that the New Testament calls deacons to live in their character and in their actions. And community, we want micro church leaders to get to know one another, to be friends and to disciple and hold one another accountable. And so you commit to being in community, not only with your micro church, but with other micro church leaders, because we cannot do this by ourselves. That's what we call the missionary track. That's how we can help you move from a sick Christian to a micro church leader.